I have no idea what I'm going to be eating for dinner tonight, nor do I really remember what I had for dinner last night. So that begs the question, does that mean that I'm incredibly good at living in the now? For as long as I have been me, I have avoided planning at all cost. I much prefer flying by the seat of my pants on a vacation than having a detailed itinerary. In the workplace, my strength was rolling with the punches, not anticipating them. I used to romantically declare that a plan is only as good as the thing you find to replace it. Believing wholeheartedly that the spontaneous and unexpected is always superior to the planned and anticipated alternative. I think my aversion to planning was born out of a nugget of wisdom that was shared with me in my formative years. The nugget in question was that expectations are premeditated disappointments, and that idea stuck with me in a very big way. Since then, I've heard it said many different ways. You have, if you expect nothing of someone, then you can't be disappointed by them, or simply expectations are the thief of joy. But the message is clear. Our experiences are often more colored by the expectations we bring into them than the experience itself. We've all been there. A special event is tarnished by some minute detail that fell short of our expectations. Christmas is ruined because the one all-important gift wasn't under the tree. All of the other wonderful gifts and time with family is somehow sullied by the absence of that one gift. And I continue to think that there is great wisdom in being conscious of our own expectations and also very mindful of the expectations that we create in others. To the point where I would argue that the skill of expectation management is perhaps the most important skill in the professional realm. But what does this have to do with planning? In my experience, the two have always been inseparable. A plan is an expectation writ large. If you plan to do something, you innately create an expectation. And perhaps scarier still, if you share that plan with others, you are creating expectations in all of them. In my work life, nearly all successes and failures hinged on the expectations that were set around them. Even the most disastrous failure could be transformed into the best that we could do if the expectations were set correctly early enough. It's a classic case of the optics being far more important than the outcome. If success is a function of perception, then it is wise to invest more time in controlling that perception rather than focusing on the outcome. It's a strategy that I know I am guilty of both in my personal and my professional life. It's a version of the play the player, not the game. But recently I took my first few baby steps towards rehabilitation. I planned a thing. In fact, I have gotten into the habit of planning exactly one thing every single week with meticulous specificity. The words I am saying right now are savagely premeditated, planned with a cold calculation that I honestly didn't know that I had in me. And what a difference it makes. It frees up so much of my attention. I can focus on so many different aspects of the process, but most importantly, I can focus on the thing that I just said and if it was correct or not.
This is something that historically got lost in the mix for me, and it kind of reminds me of the debate scene in the movie Old School, where Will Ferrell's character is debating James Carville, and at the end of the debate, he looks up after an incredibly successful argument and just claims that he blacked out. Where'd that come from? What happened? I blacked out. In most of my older, less scripted videos, when I went back to review the footage for the edit, I was always wondering what I was going to say next. And let me tell you, that makes it hard to construct a cohesive narrative. Breaks in the rhythm of recording were catastrophically obvious because when I started speaking again, I no longer remembered what I had just said or how to pick up where I had left off. I have no memory of this place. Simple questions like, can I use a pronoun here to refer to the subject of the last shot or not, were a complete mystery and totally unanswerable. And as a result, my older videos were riddled with awkward repetitions and a strong overuse of proper nouns in close proximity to one another. And this is not to say that I don't go off script frequently. I certainly do. But there is no question that having something written down that is approximately what I need to say has been an incredible force of good in my ability to quickly and effectively create these videos. But it is not without its challenges, because if we are being honest, I am a far better talker than I am a writer. Which is to say that I am a terrible writer, not that I am paying myself some high compliment for my talking skills. But the real lesson here has very little to do with the script itself, and a lot more to do with the reality that this new endeavor of mine is strangely less perception-based, and far more about the results that I achieve. I have no boss to manage expectations with. What is important is the result. Is the video good, or could it be better? If planning my words creates a better video, then I'm going to plan my words. And if I don't execute that plan flawlessly, then the only disappointment at risk is the disappointment of bungling a line and maybe having to try again. But Slow your roll, and don't get the idea that I am somehow becoming a planner. I'm definitely not ready to abandon the chaos of wait and see, nor am I going to lose my appreciation for the occasional ad-lib. This journey has opened my eyes to the appreciation of the intentional, the possibility of delighting in the deliberate. So take that for what you will, and consider me a convert to the camp of planning light. And that's about all I have to say on that one. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye. Not a potamus, ponderous.